So now that we've been through some examples of transgenerational epigenetic inheritance through the gametes, where we really do believe they are transgenerational epigenetic inheritance through the gametes, we can begin to consider how this might occur at a mechanistic sort of a level. Why would we have this apparent transmission of or memory of the phenotype and epigenotype of the parent? So the first um, theory, and probably the theory that's been around for the longest time, is that it would be some persistence of the epigenetic mark through the germline. In other words, that there would be incomplete erasure or incomplete clearing of the epigenetic marks that were there in the parents. So um, while there are many options as to what mark it might be, what epigenetic mark it might be that would persist through this, these two rounds of epigenetic reprogramming, it's really only been feasible to look at DNA methylation. So I explained about bisulfite sequencing um, in one of the previous weeks about how this works. And bisulfite sequencing is nice because you can actually perform this on a relatively small number of cells. Uh, and so you can actually look at DNA methylation within very small populations of cells, for example, early embryos or germ cells, oocytes, for example, where you can never get very many of them to study. This isn't true for the methods that we use to look at histone modifications, for example. And so the first thing and the only thing that's so far really been looked at is DNA methylation in terms of incomplete erasure. So let's start out with this thought about DNA methylation. So again, coming back to this slide that I've shown you many times before, we know that there are these two rounds of reprogramming that happen in primordial germ cell development and again in early embryonic pre-implantation development. So while the maternal and paternal genome are cleared in both cases, and we know the imprinted genes are only cleared during this period of primordial germ cell development, we also know that the IAPs are generally not really cleared. They tend to be resistant to this reprogramming. So then what happens at alleles that are due to an IAP insertion? So AVY and um, Axon Fused have an IAP inserted into them. So do they, do they behave like any other allele or do they behave like an IAP? So if we first consider the agouti viable yellow allele that is transmitted paternally, so in this case, you'll remember, following paternal transmission, there was no difference in the phenotypes, the spectrum of phenotypes in the offspring, whether or not the father was yellow and had an active allele, or whether he was pseudoagouti and had a silent and DNA methylated allele. So we've looked at DNA methylation in his mature sperm, the mature sperm of a yellow male, or the mature sperm of a pseudoagouti male. And you find that the, yellow, the sperm from the yellow male has a methylation state very similar to the somatic tissues of that same male. So you take the sperm and you take some other tissue and they look identically hypomethylated. If you do the same thing in a pseudoagouti animal, uh, again, you'll find that both are hypermethylated, heavily methylated. So because the sperm looks very similar to the somatic tissues, the argument is that probably they escaped this clearing of enduring primordial germ cell development. The other option would be, of course, that they were, were cleared but reset identically to the somatic cells. But in either case, we don't, haven't yet got um, no difference between the yellow father and the pseudoagouti father, and yet we know there's no difference in his offspring in terms of that spectrum. The next experiments then looked at what happens um, during this uh, pre-implantation development. And what was found when you follow the green line here is that uh, just like the rest of the paternal genome, the agouti viable yellow allele, when it's passed through the paternal, from the paternal transmission, so it comes in in the sperm, is actively demethylated, just like the rest of the paternal genome is. It's actively demethylated, so at fertilization, by six hours fertilization, essentially all of the DNA methylation found at this allele, in either a pseudoagouti male that had a lot of DNA methylation, or a yellow male who had very little DNA methylation at the IAP, in both cases, it's essentially completely, com completely cleared by the time you get to the fertilized egg. And if you look at blastocysts derived from either of these males, they also have very little methylation. And so this would say this clearing has happened not in primordial germ cell development, but it has happened in early embryonic development. And since the clearing has happened completely in a case where we don't see epigenetic inheritance, um, this is perhaps what you might expect. It would have complete clearing at some point. We, it wasn't necessarily expected that they would escape this reprogramming during primordial germ cell development, but it was expected following paternal transmission, given that you don't see transgenerational epigenetic inheritance, that you wouldn't see some persistence of epigenetic marks following paternal transmission in this case. Perhaps the more interesting thing to, cons to consider is what happens following maternal transmission of this AVY allele. 
So following maternal transmission, this is when we did see transgenerational epigenetic inheritance. So a yellow mother gave more rise to more yellow offspring than a pseudoagouti mother. In this case, we still don't see clearing through oogenesis because if you take the oocytes from a yellow mother or from a pseudoagouti mother, what you end up finding is that they still have very different epi uh, DNA methylation profiles. And it's very similar to the somatic cells of those same females. But when you begin to follow their methylation through early development, you find that they, the, this AVY allele following maternal transmission when it comes from the egg is demethylated at the same rate as the rest of the genome, so passively through early development. The important thing when we consider whether DNA methylation may be the epigenetic mark that persists between generations for this AVY allele is that when we look at blastocysts that have come from these yellow or pseudoagouti mothers, they both have essentially no methylation. In other words, we have reached a resetting point, a global nadir in DNA methylation, and we can't see any difference between the blastocysts from each of these females. And this is despite the fact that those females will go on to have quite different ranges or a different spectrum of phenotypes um, in their offspring. So if you consider this, it's quite a complicated concept that, um, about whether we're considering we can see this or not. However, to summarize the things that I've just told you, we know that the AVY allele appears to escape primordial germ cell reprogramming, but it is reprogrammed in early embryonic development, just like the rest of the genome, both when it's inherited paternally or if it's inherited maternally. So if we assume that epigenetic inheritance is caused by incomplete clearing of epigenetic marks, then what this says is when we've studied DNA methylation, DNA methylation is really highly unlikely to be that heritable epigenetic mark. We can't find a time where when we see transgenerational epigenetic inheritance, we see some persistence of those epigenetic marks, at least in terms of DNA methylation. Okay, so it seems unlikely DNA methylation is that heritable epigenetic mark. And this is despite the fact that it was really the best candidate. It was the best candidate because firstly it was the only one we could accurately measure, but also because DNA methylation we know is um, very faithfully maintained by DNMT1. We know, we've always known about how, or very, for a very long time, know how DNA methylation can be maintained mitotically at least. Yeah, so what, what else could it be if it's not DNA methylation? Well, one option is that it could be some sort of histone mark. This hasn't been particularly favoured. And this is not because of the Uguti viable yellow allele, but rather because of axon fused. In axon fused, we know that we can also see paternal um, epigenetic inheritance. So that is via the sperm. So what happens during spermatogenesis is that almost, what's, what it was used to be thought that all the histone proteins were ejected from the sperm chromatin, and instead the sperm chromatin is packaged up with protamines. So it's thought, well, how could you have some persistence of a histone mark when actually you don't have histones there in the sperm, you have protamines. But it's been relatively recently shown that actually there are quite a, quite a number of histones that persist in the sperm chromatin. So sperm chromatin now is no longer thought to be solely protamines, but it's thought to be a mixture of protamines and histones. So this is still certainly a possibility that there's some histone mark that is carried over between generations. But the other option that we'll talk about in the next lecture is this idea of a messenger molecule, that while DNA methylation may not be the heritable epigenetic mark across generations, it could be there's some messenger that goes through this period and is carried through the period of reprogramming, and that messenger helps to carry the, the signal, carries the message of transgenerational epigenetic inheritance, and helps to establish those marks differently when they're being established post-implantation. So at the moment, it's thought this messenger could be RNA, and there's evidence both from plants but also from mammals. And so in the next lecture, we'll think about these um, effects of RNA molecules that may influence transgenerational epigenetic inheritance.